Today we begin a new section in the book of Leviticus. Now we recognize the obvious truth that the book of Leviticus resumes the story of the people of Israel where the book of Exodus leaves them, encamped at the foot of Mount Sinai. The place of worship, the tabernacle has been constructed, and now they're receiving the instructions for the worship of God. So far in our reading of Leviticus, we've seen in chapters one through seven, kind of the outline of the offerings required of both the people and the priesthood. Chapters eight through 10, describe the consecration of Aaron and his sons as priests. And today in chapter 11, we see that God gives various laws regarding eating land and sea and animals of the air, along with a clear call to holiness even a complete avoidance of eating anything connected to that which is unclean. Now I find it interesting as I studied this passage that among the animals that are considered unclean, many fit into these categories of predators or scavengers or even potentially poisonous or dangerous foods. So much of, if not most of, what God is calling them to avoid in their diet was to promote good health and to protect them from a bad diet of dangerous and communicable diseases. See, God's call to holiness was not for unhappiness, but healthiness. Let me say that again. God's call to holiness was not for unhappiness, but healthiness. Now, did they know this? No, really what was given to them, what God had given them in their instruction was that they were to just simply trust and obey him. Did God feel obligated to explain to them all the reasons while eating predators, scavengers, or dangerous food was ultimately unhealthy? No, but look at what he says in verse 45 of chapter 11. Verse 45, he says, I the Lord am the one who brought you up from the land of Egypt, that I might be your God. Therefore, you must be holy because I am holy. It's like God is saying, as the one who created and redeemed you, I'm calling you to trust me and to obey me. Now we know as Christians, we're not under the same dietary laws of Leviticus 11. In Acts 15, we read what is known as the Jerusalem Council, that it was determined that obedience to the laws of Moses were not required for the followers of Jesus. Now, although I believe there's a lot of wisdom in avoiding predators and scavengers or dangerous food in your diet, we're not under the law because Jesus Christ has fulfilled the law. Yet just as in Leviticus 11, God told the people of that day that he was calling them to trust and obey, so too today may we in everything we do trust and obey God. Like the people of Israel, we may not know all the reasons God is calling us to do certain things or avoid others, but I can say this, God's call to holiness is not for unhappiness, but for healthiness. In fact, as we conclude this time of being daily in the word together, I think the Apostle Paul best sums up the point, the reality that we're called to live for God's glory in all that we do and to trust him and obey him. See, in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, Paul writes, whatever therefore you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God, amen.